Good morning. Thank you for your singing this morning. Uh, the words of these hymns give me an opportunity to talk about something which I hope is subtext for all that we do at Creekside, and that is the grace of Jesus Christ. I think although we sing this and proclaim this, it is possible to take it too literally, however. There's a story about a couple who was visiting a church and walked in and asked the people who were already seated, uh, are these seats saved? And they said, no, but we're praying for them. <laughs> As many of you know, I'm a member of the Northern Indiana District Board. Uh, Ron Nicodemus also serves on that board. And I think Ron would agree that it's a position which has been challenging as well as rewarding. One of the rewarding things is meeting with different church boards or leadership groups to hear what's going on in their congregations. Usually it's a pretty friendly conversation, like when we met here at Creekside in February and talked about our recent Advent outreach projects and how the pastoral team is working and so on. The conversations aren't always so cordial. Last month, we met with a church leadership team who had invited us to be there so they could tell us in person why they will no longer be financially supporting the Northern Indiana District. They expressed some concerns about financial management, mostly from issues that had been resolved several years before, but most of their concerns centered around belief especially belief about salvation. Several times in the meeting they said, we don't even know what you people believe. Well, I know what I believe, and I am not ashamed to share it with you this morning. But one of the things that I believe is that salvation cannot be summarized in a sound bite it is much more profound than simply saying the right sentence. And although I'm interested in what other people believe, I'm also pretty interested in how they behave and how their belief and their behavior influence one another. In church speak, when we talk about beliefs, that's usually the realm of theology. And when we talk about behavior, that's typically under the discipline of ethics. And maybe in abstract conversations, we can separate those two. But in real life, when we try to separate what we believe from how we behave, we're called hypocrites. Now, this can apply to anybody but it has historically been a public relations problem for those of us who are in the church. Certainly, Jesus reserved his harshest criticism for the Pharisees, the religious leaders who were great at tracking the details of the Jewish law, but who were pretty lousy at showing compassion for the poor and the outcast. I believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation and eternal life. I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and anyone who wants to know God must take that path in order to find the truth of their own life. Some people start with belief in Jesus. Some people start by searching for truth and life through compassionate behavior and discover only later that it is Jesus that they have been searching for. However we begin on the way, it is a path that goes through where we are right now. We might be pointing the wrong way on that path and need to turn around and go the other direction, but you can get there from here. You don't have to have a different family or a different history or a different income or a different personality. Jesus meets us wherever we are, whoever we are. The journey may change us. I hope it will. 
but following Jesus will not make us anything other than whom God created us to be. We are created in God's image. And if that image has become distorted or disfigured, that's our fault, not God's. I believe, I know, that I am a sinner and in need of grace, not just when I accepted Jesus Christ, but every day since then. I cannot save anyone. I can't even save myself. Salvation is a free gift from God, and the grace of Jesus is a free gift for anyone who is willing to accept it. As a Christian and someone who has received God's grace in my life, I have a responsibility to share the wonderful grace of Jesus with other people. And if I care about other people, I will want them to experience the same grace in their lives that I experienced in mine. And one way to share that wonderful grace is to extend it to others as freely as I can, the way that Jesus gave it to me. And this is the point where I suspect I would part company from some of my brothers at the congregation that I visited. At, to this point, I would imagine that we believe many, if not all, of the same things. But how we view and how we treat people who believe differently than we do can get kind of ugly. I know that there are Christians who think that the most loving thing that you can do if you think somebody's belief or behavior is wrong is to remind them that if they persist in that belief or behavior that they're going to hell. Somebody at this meeting said, well, if I tell them they're condemned to hell and it turns out that I'm wrong, I'll have all of eternity to apologize. Eh, maybe, but how about how you're treating them right now? Doesn't that count for anything? Don't you think it would kind of put a strain on your relationship to tell somebody that they're condemned to hell? By that logic, you should tell everyone else that they're going to hell because if it turns out that you're wrong, eternity is time enough to make a lot of apologies. The problem is, it might make your life right now pretty hellish. This does not mean that anything goes. I think as a friend, a spouse, a parent, and a pastor, I have an obligation to point out beliefs and behavior which are self-destructive or are destructive of the body of Christ. The theological word for this is sin. And I need to be even more aware of it in myself than I am in other people, especially as a pastor. Remember that hypocrite word? But confessing sin and even calling others to confession is different than assuming that I can pass judgment on God's behalf. I believe that my understanding of God and the ways that God is revealed in Jesus are limited. I do not claim to fully know God's purpose or God's, God's purpose for my life or for anyone else's. To preach condemnation is to deny the wonderful grace of Jesus, not just for other people, but to myself. I have wrestled with my own beliefs and repented of some of my own behavior, and there have been times that I've had concerns about some of you. I have never told anyone that they are going to hell. I don't think I could say that to another person. Now, I confess, there are times that I have implied to my computer, if it doesn't change its behavior, it might be going to hell. <laughs> um, 
I am not proud of that, and my computer hasn't changed either. I would pray <coughs> that everyone, those in the church, those outside of it, people with whom I agree, people who I think are dead wrong, I would pray that everyone, including myself, could hear and believe Paul's prayer from Ephesians 3. This is a tiny glimpse of the wonderful grace of Jesus that Paul expresses throughout the New Testament. And it's what I want to proclaim in my belief and behavior. I pray that according to the riches of God's glory, he may grant that you be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And because I love this church, not just this congregation, but I love the vision of what the church could be if we actually shared the wonderful grace of Jesus. I would add Paul's benediction. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat>